very good morning, dear lovers, viewers, and followers of Lighthouse Television. Thank you for always having your eyes. Always stand by on your TV set to be part of us, especially part of Marriage Reality Show. That is every Friday, 11 a.m. in the name of Jesus. And um, I continue to, to give God the glory and the praise for what he's doing. I, a couple of testimonies are coming through for what, the, what God is doing in marriages, what the Lord is doing in relationships. And uh, good news is um, we, we are having statistics break down, go down, uh, divorce is a bit going down, and there's quite a transition in the house of God. Marriages are being renewed day by day. At least there is a good atmosphere. We can tell that the Lord is for us and is with us in Jesus' mighty name. And I want to thank you men and women who watch us from all over the world. You're sure to have data on your gadgets, sharing, copying and sharing the link to, to the world and the family and friends. Thank you. May the Lord reward you for that seed in Jesus' mighty name. And um, I continue to remind you that in Marriage Reality Show, we don't talk about anything more than love and its content and its you know things that walk along with it and like i've always told you love is another name of god and there's no way you can approach god except by means of prayer and that is the reason why before we go any further you and me ought to bow heads down in a minute and pray so that we'll be able to fathom of what he has to say to you and me today in jesus mighty name let's pray father in the name of jesus I want to thank you for my brothers and my sisters watching from all over the world. I thank you because you're speaking to us by your Holy Spirit. You give us the grace to fathom and understand that that you ought to mention. You want to mention to our spirit, to our body, to our soul, concerning our relationship, our marriage, and love life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Remember, we are not yet done with our season. We are dealing with being love receptive or being lovable, being a, a ground on which love reigns and flourishes, being a person on whom love falls and remains, not this temporal bit where, you know, today in love and the next day you lose it. Today in a marriage, the next day you lose it. It is... It is it is the decision intention about the Lord to see you and me understand how to keep ourselves in position, love receptive, love, you know, a, a place where, you know, it's, it's a beautiful landing spot of love from our either parties in Jesus' mighty name. And now we're going to draw uh, from the book of Luke today, uh, chapter 1. And uh, we're going to go verse 57. And our role model today is going to be Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. The Bible says, verse 57, Luke chapter 1, verse 57. It says, when it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and her relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy. And, um, and they shared her joy. Verse 59 says, On the eighth day they came to circumcise the child. And they were going to name him after his father's name, Zachariah. But his mother spoke up and said, no, no, he is to be called John. All right. They say to her, these are relatives. They say to her, these are relatives, neighbors and friends, ladies and gentlemen, neighbors, uh, relatives, and friends. They say to Elizabeth, there is no one among your relatives who has that name? You see that? These are neighbors, friends, and relatives. They say to Elizabeth, there is no one among your relatives, among your people, who has that name. Verses 62, then they made signs to his father 
to find out what he would like to name his child. Verse 63, he asked for a writing tablet and to everyone's astonishment, he said, or he wrote, his name is John. Verse 64, immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue was loosed and he began to speak, praising God. Now, okay, let me first finish verse 65. The neighbors were all filled with arrow and throughout the hill county of Judea, people were talking about all these things. Everyone who had this wondered about asking, what then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was with him. All right, now, I want us to have this Elizabeth in the picture. Whose husband, the mouth is sealed. The husband does not speak. Rendered damp, he can't speak nothing. And here you are, you're pregnant. And uh, time comes, you're set to give birth. God blesses, you give birth this son. Relatives of your husband, Zachariah, your relatives, your friends, your neighbors are all around. Some are older than you. Some are more religious than you are. Some are more educated than you are. Some are more understanding than you are. Some are, you know, they are better placements than you are. Relatives united with friends and neighbors, they come to you and propose a name that should be given to your son. As a mother, she also had a name called John. And our relatives have called um, against her. There are many, I imagine, a hundred versus one person. They say, you cannot call your boy this name called John. Why? Because in us, amongst us, in your whole family, Zachariah's whole family, everywhere, no one has ever had such a name. It's not a fitting name. Many friends, relatives, neighbors say to her, you cannot name this baby John. But Elizabeth insists and says, his name is going to be John. Now, when we go down, they insist. They say that it's even compare notes. They make signs. And I mean, a sign language communicating to Zechariah now, who was not able to speak. And they ask him, what shall we name this boy? To their astonishment, the Bible says, to their surprise, the Bible says, he writes down, he is to be called John. Do you know what this teaches you and me? It tells me and it tells you that Elizabeth, regardless of how, you know, lame the husband is, regardless of how unable to speak the husband is, Elizabeth still was in agreement with her husband. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, this teaches you and me that Elizabeth was not the kind of woman driven by suggestions of relatives, friends, and neighbors, but he, she was the woman who walked in agreement with her husband. And what does this tell me? I want to think that much as, you know, Zechariah was not able to speak, I want to imagine that he already had an agreed writing or something. I, mean, I had to imagine that already, you know, Elizabeth had communicated to her husband in sign language and it agreed that the baby should be called John. But because Zechariah is not able to speak, when relatives and friends come aboard, the neighbors, the men, the women, the circles of, you know, name it all, they gathered and told Mary and said, look, 
you can't name this boy John because it's nowhere in your family lineage, ever both ways. But Elizabeth insists and says the baby will be called John. What does this teach you and me? It teaches you and me that, you know, remember before they conceived John, they had spent many years without a child. Which leads me to a thought that the reason why these guys lived together for tens of years in marriage without a child, which is really unbearable, especially as per the tradition pressure, especially from a man's side, what enabled them to live all this long? They were a couple with an agreement. They lived a life of agreement. They lived a life of one accordness. And that therefore becomes our learning, you and me, that in our case to being lovable and love receptive, making it easy for our partners to love us, finding it easy, you know, making it motivational for them to, you know, be encouraged to love us again and again and keep on the same spot. We ought to be men and women who respect agreement. It is of no value, it's actually love killing every time you're a man or woman who works full time in agreement with a woman, I mean in disagreement with a woman. It is of no value. It is of it is it is destroying. It is it is irritating. It messes up the whole atmosphere of the relationship. Every time you a couple which walks and lives in disagreement full time. In this, therefore, I want to call on women. I want to call on a man watching right now. That sometimes in a move to make yourself lovable, in a move to keep your home happy and at peace, you ought to sometimes act a fool and take it before the Lord in prayer. You don't have to win every game. You don't have to win every argument. You don't have to be the star of everything in the house. Sometimes be a fool, lose some games. Why? Because every time you want to live in disagreement, every time you want to win, every, one, every time you want to live top of every beat, trust me, you are becoming irrational to the woman or to the man you're married to. So you and me, in a move to be lovable or love receptive, I challenge that we ought to take up the spirit that was in the life of Elizabeth, which is, my man is lame, he's not able to speak, but even then, I'm in agreement with him. I know there are better pastors, there are better relatives, there are people who have better ideas than he is. There are people who can speak more eloquently than he does at this point, but even then, I ought to do what I agreed with him to do. And so, child of God, my charge for you today is convince yourself, convict yourself, put your pieces together, do whatever it takes to have yourself in agreement with your man, in agreement with your woman. Count on me that love, that marriage, that relationship will live at peace all through. Let me tell you, I was young, now I'm old. I'll tell you that real love is not for stars, it's not for wise men, it's not for the brightest, it's for fools. The men and women who are to stay long in love, who are to last in their marriages, who are to last in their relationships, are the men and women who have, at a certain extent, chosen to act fools. The day you want to be the wisest, the day you want to be the best, the day you want to be the winner, trust me, that is the day you are beginning to lose your marriage, that is the day you're beginning to lose your man. And so like Elizabeth, I can imagine, I want you to put yourself in Elizabeth. Imagine her having been driven by the pressure, you know, taken on by, by, by the community, by the neighbors, the opinion of the relatives, the opinion of friends, many of them. I imagine her having yielded to their guide or to their counsel. Because sometimes such people come and speak words that seem to make sense. When you search them within your heart under normal standards, traditional standards, family standards, they really make a lot of sense. That's why the approach, actually, in the approach they say, in our family, we don't have this name. It has never been anywhere, be it in Elizabeth's family, be it in your husband's family. We don't have this name anywhere. Even in our community, no one has this name. 
how do you call your son John? We've never had this kind of name around here. So they are communicating something that seems to make more sense. Something that seems to add up. But making sense does not mean being adhered to. That is why even if it's a foolish argument, if you in it with your husband, if you in it with a woman, go for it. Don't be a kind of person who's driven by what you picked from the surrounding because it has made sense to your heart. Then you come and want to override what you agreed with your man or woman. That is the starting point of one feeling disrespected. That is the starting point of one feeling you know, less valued. That is one that causes your man or woman beginning to lose their position in your life. And therefore, child of God, if you want to keep it at peace, if you want to keep it at love, if you want to keep it happy, if you want to remain, oh my God, in a home full of peace, make up your mind to certain points become a fool. I imagine now Elizabeth having yielded, I imagine if she had done it, if she had yielded to their counsel, to their instruction, to their wisdom, to their knowledge, and then at that very spot, because after they wrote down, and after, actually after he wrote down and, and, and it, it rhymed with Elizabeth's word that the son is going to be called John, the Bible says now he spoke up. His mouth was open and he began to speak. Now I want to imagine an Elizabeth somewhere, you have yielded to the, to the pressure of the neighborhood, of the relatives, of the friends. And in the same spot, the mouth of your man opens and he begins to speak. I imagine the war it was going to be. I imagine the response from Zechariah it was going to be. But thank God for this hand of wisdom that was on Elizabeth, saying that regardless of my man's position, I have to remain in our agreement. We agreed that the boy will be called John. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, in our move to being lovable and love receptive, you and me ought to respect an agreement between you and your man. Otherwise, the house will be on fire. Let me tell you, Elizabeth has in-laws in, in this picture. Elizabeth has best friends, neighbors. Elizabeth has the circle of friends from both her side and the husband's side. And what they are suggesting, actually what they are telling her is of sense according to their tradition because they say in the family it's not there, in our community it's not there. They seem like what they have or what they are saying is of sense. Family standards sense, community standards sense, traditional standards sense. You understand? It was of sense. But to be of sense, ladies and gentlemen, does not take away the fact that there is an argument between the two of you. This tells us that Elizabeth was this woman who is not moved by what happens out there, by their opinions. He didn't mind the family, he didn't mind the relatives and whoever. He minded what was between them, her and the husband. And therefore, it's my charge and call on you, ladies and gentlemen, that you did not get married to the whole family. You do not get married to your husband's relatives. You did not marry all the girls. You did not marry, you don't, you did not marry your in-laws. Be it your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, be it their brothers or sisters, you did not get married to them. You got married to your husband, that same man, one man. You got married to that woman, not her relatives, not her friends, not her, you know, not her neighbors. Therefore, respect that point 
at which you've agreed two of you in your house. Some of you make mistakes by, you know, you agree on something with your husband, then you go outside and begin to look, you know, seek authenticity. You begin to seek for, you know, affirming opinions from the neighborhood. Trust me, the moment they will convince you or convict you against what you agreed with the man or woman, you come and change it without his knowledge, you have attracted trouble. Actually, the next day when you come with a proposal, assumed to be, you know, someone told me A, B, C, D, someone shared with me this, this, and it, won't, it sounded to be making sense. Trust me, it feels like good to you, but it's killer of love in the other party. It is a sign of disrespect. It's a sign of, you know, less value. It's a sign of no sense. Why? Because you agreed on this thing, two of you, before you know it, now the sound of the third party has come on board. And that is the starting point to lose it. Therefore, my brother, my sister, if you want to remain lovable, I mean love receptive, that they will love you, they love you, and love you every day that goes by. No fading, nothing. Make up your mind to live in agreement with your man. Make up your mind to live in agreement with a woman maintain, retain, and respect the things you've agreed on, two of you. And don't seek any extra opinion from what you agreed on with your husband or with your wife. And it shall be well with you in the name of Jesus. Ah, when I go down to verse, uh, verse 65, it says, the neighbors were all filled with awe, and throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about all these things. Okay. Everyone who had this wondered about it, asking, what then is the child going to be? For the Lord's hand is with them, is with him. Now listen. These friends and neighbors, even the few that they have seen, the few that they have heard, it hasn't taken an hour, the whole village knows. In just minutes, the whole community, the whole hill, the whole hill of Judea, everywhere in cities and places, they know what has happened in the house of Zechariah and Elizabeth. Now imagine if by any chance <laughs> Elizabeth had, you know, dropped the argument with the husband and taken up their idea. And maybe at that spot, Zechariah speaks. And then they begin fighting. Guess what kind of news? In the next 20 minutes, social media, everywhere, it will be known. Meaning, actually sometimes these neighbors, these friends and relatives, sometimes the best way to treat it is to act like it's none of their business. Why? Because their interest is to pick what to tell it, what to tell to the world. And therefore, child of God, I beseech especially women, I know you like so much of talking. You can't you can't you can't afford to keep it to yourself, you can't afford to bear it. I beg you, there is nothing as important as the confinement you've had with your husband and that word you've agreed with, her, with him from within there. The moment you lick it, trust me, you lose value before him. You lose your position in his life, in his heart. Therefore, be a woman. I'm talking, I'm talking to you women. Be a woman who respects what you agree with your man in confinement that idea that word that secret that issue something that has happened between the two of you in confinement keep it right there trust me you'll be a love receptive woman in jesus mighty name that which you have seen as an error because the bedroom bears a lot of issues that which you've seen as an issue, as, as, a, as a weakness, as, as a problem, let it end right in that room.
If anything is to go out, let it be that which you have agreed on should go out. Don't be the initiator or the person or the transporter of what began from the bedroom to the rest of the world. The moment it leaks to the ears of your husband, woman, you'll lose your marriage. You'll lose your position. Even when you remain in that home, you'll lose. Actually, besides losing him or losing his love, you'll lose his confidence. He'll fear to tell you again. And this is what happens. The moment you lose confidence, the moment you lose trust, the moment he can't trust you with any word, the next thing that will begin to happen in your marriage is to lie to you. Especially women, you push so hard to get, you know, to be told what is happening. And most men, the moment they sense that you're such a talkative woman who leaks secret, I mean, bedroom issues, who leaks arguments, definitely the next thing the man will hold back and he'll never tell you again. And guess what happens next thereafter? He begins lying to you. And like, a, like, like always, darkness will always be exposed to, the room is exposed by the light. One day, those lies will come to your knowledge. And the moment you discover that your husband all along has been lying to you, trust me, you too will lose trust in him. And guess what is next? Now the house both ways is on fire. You don't trust him. He has lost his position in your heart because he has lied to you. And he is also lying to you because you lost your position in his life when you leaked the secrets in that bedroom, when you leaked the, dis the, when you leaked the argument, when you leaked the word, you had the two of you in the bedroom and he had it outside. So both ways lose trust in each other. Both ways look, lose confidence in each other. Guess what happens thereafter? You are actually in the same room, but divorced. The moment you don't trust each other, the moment you can't confide in each other, then definitely you're not together. Because I'm thinking the real love life is confinement in each other. If I can't confide in you my issues, if I have to pretend with you, act with you, not be real with you, then there's no true love in there. And once there's no true love, definitely you have separated already even when you're under the same roof. And that is what is happening out there. That's why, child of God, the word agreement and keeping, you know, these agreed on issues right inside your room is very key and important. Why? It is a foundation on which your marriage will stand and flourish. Therefore, don't undermine that word you have agreed on with your husband, regardless of how foolish, how petty, how small it might feel. Retain it. Keep it. Be with it. Otherwise, the moment it's leaked out there, as small as it feels, you lose trust. And the moment he loses trust in you, he'll begin to lie to you in a case to hide, you know, because in, in fear for you to leak secrets. And when he tells you these lies, at the end of the day, you discover the lies too. Also, you lose trust in him. That means now from that point, no one trusts the other. And once that happens, trust me, the house gets on fire. That's why, child of God, as early as possible, if by any chance, you know, you discover that in you has been that weakness, as you call them, you can't hold back a word. Before I close today, and I now have a minute to close today, I want to pray with you that the Lord teaches you how to be a secret-keeping woman. How to be a man or a woman who counts your words. That you have a calculator before you speak out. You first count, hold a second. Is this for my house or this is a general talk? And for those of you who already made mistakes and you have lost trust, the man can no longer confide in you, the woman can no longer confide in you, you both ways don't trust each other. I am going to pray with you to the God of a second chance, that the Lord will renew your minds, that the Lord will renew your position, that you will trust each other again. But once that is renewed and restored, take heed that you do not leak any word entrusted to you. And as a matter of fact, if, you know, such was happening, you already, you already began lying to him or to her, or you already lost it, I pray to God today, now that you know the truth, 
you go up before him and apologize, reset and begin a new page. Because trust me, that your husband who's been lying to you too much, reason has been at one time he discovered he could not have your confidence. Every time he tells you thing, maybe at one point you leaked a word. And therefore, apologize as early as possible. Tell him, my husband, I'm sorry. Now I know what causes you to lie to me. It's because you had a certain word that leaked from out of our bedroom. And that caused you to begin lying to me. And I myself too had lost you know, my trust. I no longer trusted you. But now I want us to reset and begin afresh. Trust me, there's no love life as beautiful as when you're confident with each other, when you can confide in one another, when you can tell each other from the real life perspective. In Jesus' mighty name. Now we are going to pray. I want you to raise, to raise your faith with me that the Lord will restore today that position you lost from your spouse. Maybe because you didn't know. Maybe because you were under influence. Maybe, I don't know what happened, whatever the reason that caused it. I want you and me to agree that the Spirit of God will descend down and convict your man or woman. The Bible says when the Holy Spirit comes, you convict the world in regard with sin and righteousness. So the Holy Spirit has the power to convict your man convict even you yourself and give you the grace and ability you know now to reset and walk rightfully in you know in truth and in confidence and you know the secret keeping in the name of Jesus secret keeping is one of the Lord's instructions he gave to disciples a couple of times see to it that you don't tell them see to it that don't tell anyone that I'm, I am he see to it that you don't tell them I am the Christ I'm the I'm this I'm, no, I'm the Messiah the secret so secret keeping confidence on the agreed stuff within that house is of God keeping secrets is of God one time my girl the Lord was revealing to me recently about what happened in the Garden of Eden. God spoke to Adam and gave him words of instructions. See to it that you don't eat this tree. Eat this you will live. Have dominion, have power, have authority, but don't touch this tree. It was a word between Adam and God. At the spot God told Adam or gave him these instructions, Eve was not there. But when Eve came in the picture, Adam rushed to tell her. And guess what? The next day, the devil, Satan, came and engaged Eve. Before they knew it, Eve leaked the secrets. And before they knew it, they lost the glory of God. Here we are still struggling because of that big, big mistake. They were found naked. They lost it all. And guess what caused them to lose it? Leakage of the confidence. Leakage of the word between the two parties, Adam and God. So confidence or secret keeping sometimes, not even sometimes, is the seed of God. Child of God, if you're a married woman and you don't keep your house secrets, you're a fool. If you're a married man and you go around leaking what happens around your woman's life, that's not of God. And that is the very point from which the devil can be able to break your marriage. But in Jesus' mighty name, I'm speaking a word of healing. I'm speaking a word of restoration. I'm speaking a word of revival. That the Holy Spirit will convict you. The Holy Spirit will convict your man and your woman right now. In the name of Jesus, to trust you again to apologize, to renew your marriage, to renew your love in the name of Jesus. I speak now that you know the Bible says we'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. So in Jesus' name, by the reason of having known the truth on how to keep a secret and how to keep it confident, in Jesus' mighty name, I declare, receive your freedom in your home, receive trust, receive renewal, receive new love in Jesus' mighty name. My Father in heaven, I thank you for my brothers and sisters watching. You have restored our love life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. And I ask of you, copy and paste the link to friends and family. In Jesus' name.
ولا فيه